Dear friends, my name is Andrei Dunaev. At this moment, uh, I am head of R&D Center of Biomedical Photonics of Oral State University, named after Ivan Turgenev. First of all, I would like to thank for the invitation to, to make a talk on this webinar. The topic of my lecture is about priorities of our university scientific activity, and I would like to introduce you to biomedical photonics. Just a little bit information about where we are from. Uh, a little more than 360 kilometers separates us from our capital, Moscow. If to be honest, our city is uh, quite nice. And uh, if uh, you uh, uh, join to our university, I hope uh, you will be see that. At the moment, our university has become the largest name as a flagship university in our region. I would like to emphasize that we have come for the biomedical photonics from biomedical engineering just 10 years ago. This slide in more detail presents the main directions of our activities in various fields of medicine. It is important for modern medicine to have a non-invasive, fast, reliable and comfortable diagnostics. Uh, here we can see our main direction, uh, medical areas such as endocrinology, rheumatology, dermatology, minimally invasive surgery and so on. The students involved in research activities also can join our student chapter supported by two uh, very famous in our area international optical uh, societies, SPIE and OSA, Optical S Society. The chapter is aimed at uh, the spreading knowledge about photonics and light-based technologies in the local community, attracting new students and school children to the field of science and technology and uh, contributing to the professional development of students through the organization of different educational events. The activities of our chapter include outreach uh, events for students of Oral State University, for students of local schools participating uh, in science fairs for children and adults, so we can show both the very basics and more complex research for everyone. We invite students to the weekly seminars on our research, you can see here, uh, teach them various skills useful for their study and scientific work. Important parts of our activities are annual lectures by scientists invited from over countries and participations in international conferences, which provides valuable feedback on our work and demonstrate the results to scientific uh, community. The geography of the uh, chapter's participations is quite wide already. So, what is biophotonics? The term photonics arose by analogy with the term electronics. This is the science of the interaction of light and uh, matter. Photonics, uh, photonics utilizes photons instead of, electronic, of electrons to transmit processes and store information and thus provides a, a tremendous gain in capacity and speed in information technology. Photonics is the dominant technology for the new millennium. Biophotonics is a scientific area that studies phenomena and techniques associated with the interaction of biological objects and photons. To use of photonics uh, for optical diagnostics as well as for light-activated and light-guided therapy will have a major impact of health care. This slide shows the spectrum of electromagnetic radiation. The visible light of the human eye is only 3% of the entire range. 
The spectrum of visible light can be remembered using a simple saying, Richard of York gave battle in vain. The first letters of each word correspond to the color, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. The sun is the main natural source of the light. Outside uh, the boundaries of uh, visible uh, light are the infrared and ultraviolet range. At this light, you can, we can see a challenge and the needs of biomedicine. I would like just emphasize to you that only combination of imaging techniques based on biomedical photonics allowed to us um, to analyzing and to analyze uh, minimal objects um, so about uh, microns, and uh, this allowed to us. Uh, to, uh, to to analyze and uh, uh, and, and uh, study the uh, disease progression on early stages. It's very important in medicine because uh, all the technologies uh, well known at this moment, uh, such as um, MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, ultrasound, computer uh, uh, tomography, uh, this object, minimal object, is about millimeters. But in uh, uh, optics uh, technologies, uh, we can analyze um, microns. It's very important uh, and good opportunity for us. Research activities, uh, at the, you can, uh, we can see at this slide, uh, and um, I would like to emphasize to you um, a very strong grow up. Uh, you can see this uh, in the last, uh, at last uh, years. This is a research activity in biophotonics, and here we can see um, a lot of uh, magazines, uh, journals uh, with uh, information about uh, biophotonics uh, area in medicine. Uh, light is used above for the purposes of uh, diagnose, diagnosing various diseases and for treatment. At this light, we can see uh, just the typical examples of uh, using uh, light in medicine. Uh, for example, here, uh, here we can see an um, example with uh, light therapy. This is for diagnostics and so on. Laser scalpels also find great use in surgery. What is a laser? A laser is a device that emits light through a process of optical amplification based on the stimulated emission of electromagnetic radiation. The term laser originated as an acronym for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Here you can see also the main properties of a laser, distinguishing it from all the light sources. The first laser was built in 1960 by Theodore Maiman at Hughes Research Laboratories based on theoretical work by Charles Towns and Arthur Shavlow. Since the early period of laser history, laser research has produced a variety of improved and specialized laser types optimized for different performance goals. A femtosecond laser, as you can see at this slide, is a laser which emits optical pulses with a duration well below one that is to say in the domain of femtoseconds. You can see here. It thus also belongs to the category of ultra-fast lasers and, uh, or ultra-short pulse lasers. You can see here, this is uh, again uh, just example of an image of neuron in the brain with two photon fluorescence. At this slide, uh, we can see a, a, a modern classification application of light in bi bi biomedicine. 
it's uh, three directions. Optical non-invasive diagnostics, as you can see, phototherapy and laser surgery. As an increasingly aging world population presents unique health problems, biophotonics offers great hope for the early de the detection of diseases and for new modalities of light-guided and light-activated therapies. Laser have already made a significant impact on general plastic and cosmetic surgeries. Two popular examples of uh, cosmetics surgeries utilizing lasers are skin uh, uh, resurfacing, most commonly known as wrinkle removal and hair removal. Niels Finzen was one of the pioneers of phototherapy. He was awarded the Nobel Prize in Medicine and Physiology in 1903 in recognition of his contribution to the treatment of diseases, um, uh, especially lupus vulgaris with concentrated light radiation, whereby he has opened a new avenue for medical science. Finson uh, suffered from a Neiman Peak disease, which inspired him to, uh, to sunbath and investigate the effects of light on living things. The lower part of the slide shows uh, the equipment that is used for phototherapy at this moment uh, today. Here you can see modern equipment for laser surgery, a lot of different models uh, at this market. This slide shows uh, the classification of the main methods of biophotonics, which are used in diagnostics. All these uh, technologies are based on the interaction of light with the biological uh, tissue. That is using an optical radiation source and analyzing a reflected or transmitted light. What happens when light meets a biological tissue, such as skin. In the interaction of electromagnetic radiation with matter, many processes can occur. As a rule, there are three main effects that can interfere with the free propagation of light. Reflection and refraction, absorption and scattering. To use laser radiation in medicine, refraction plays an important role only in the case of irradiation of uh, transparent media. In opaque media, the refraction effect is usually difficult to measure due to absorption and scattering. The object of our study is a very complex physiological system, the microcirculatory tissue system. He's shown some, uh, something like determination of uh, microcirculatory tissue systems by Professor Alexander Krupatkin. Microcirculatory tissue system is a structural and functional unit of the body's complex consisting of a set of specialized cells, parenchyma cells, and non-cellular components of connective tissue, blood and lymphatic microvessel. An important factor that must be considered when applying methods of optical non-invasive diagnostics is the blood. Erythrocytes or red blood cells carry important diagnostics information about the state of microcirculatory tissue systems and the whole organism. Blood is also one of the main absorbs of optical radiation in tissues. At this slide, we can see absorption spectra of the light energy of the skin main chromophores uh, shown here. I would like just emphasize again uh, for, for uh, hemoglobin and oxyhemoglobin curves. Oxyhemoglobin is a red curve, a hemoglobin fraction is a, a blue curve, and very important that at this wavelength, for example, we have a completely different between two curves. On this phenomena based 
um, a lot of in, a lot of uh, uh, technologies methods in optical and invasive diagnostics here is presented diseases associated with a condition of microcirculatory uh, tissue systems, blood microcirculation and metabolic activities of human tissues investigated in our studies. Diabetes, for example, on foot, uh, rheumatic di diseases on hands, psoriasis on skin, and diseases of abdominal uh, cavity organs. Our scientific interests also include work in the field of wearable electronics, such as a gadget, fitness bracelet, and so on, for the functional diagnosis of microcirculation in the hospital as well as at home. If to be honest, we use well-known technologies, but our main goal is to raise them to the level of a wider application directly in the clinical practice of a doctor. One of the applications of the biophotonics for medical practice is functional diagnostics. To prove an answer for the equation where the laser Doppler flow metry records, you can see here, are really proportional to the uh, red blood cells velocity, we have prepared a setup, it's our experimental setup, um, uh, which uh, uh, setup combining a laser Doppler uh, monitor and high speed video capillaroscopy. As you can see, the video capillaroscopy methods, video capillaroscopy methods, allowed to register and quantify such features as a reverse blood flow, you can see here, re reverse blood flow, during occlusion test. Occlusion test is here. This effect points out that occlusion leads to simultaneous reduction of blood flow in a single capillary. You can see here, it's a single capillary from approximately four millimeters per second to small negative values. And uh, the curves reflect high degree of correspondence, correspondence between the local variation of blood perfusion and blood flow velocity before and after occlusion. Before and after occlusion, you can see here. In this study, we used an occlusion test by clamping the branchial artery with a cuff, here, a cuff from tonometer, for example, for three minutes. Occlusion is in three minutes. The obtained results show that the combined use of uh, laser Doppler flow metry and video capillaroscopy methods gives additional useful information to improve the reliability of data interpretation. It becomes possible to compare the changes in the perfusion in certain tissue volume with local tissue blood flow velocity and its direction in a single capillary. The generalized functional scheme of the optical measurements by the optical invasive diagnostics is shown here. In general, wall biophotonics devices structurally always contain fibers, you can see here, for probing biological tissue and receiving fibers. H here we can see uh, just um, a typical example of a multifunctional laser non-invasive diagnostic system complex. Um, this uh, system uh, is used for research and diagnostics in uh, various fields um, of biomedicine, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, cancer, cosmetic surgery, and so on. This uh, system uh, includes, uh, for example, four channels in one system. It's very important in one combined, in one device, just uh, if four channels together. Fluorescence spectroscopy, absorption spectroscopy, laser Doppler flowmetry, pulse oximetry. This system allows the following blood microcirculation parameters to be obtained. 
for example, index of blood microcirculation, tissue oxygen saturation, and so on, and fluorescent spectra of tissue in the genus biomarkers too. These main parameters of the channels of a uh, complex uh, shown in this slide. As you can see, the complex uses five sources of optical radiation to implement four, me four methods of optical invasive diagnostics. This uh, device, this system, is uh, produced by our industrial partner, Russian industrial partner, uh, company LASMA. Now let's uh, just a short talk about common methods of biophotonics used for diagnostics. Laser Doppler flowmetry method is based on an optical non-invasive sensing of the tissue by laser light and analyzing of scattered and reflected emission from the moving red blood cells. We can see this here. Um, uh, in the uh, tissues, uh, recorded parameters is an index of microcirculation or perfusion, which depends on the concentration of red blood cells in the uh, probed volume and their movement speed. The signal recorded of laser Doppler flowmetry is the superposition of several oscillatory components corresponding to specific physiological mechanisms. Traditionally, blood flow fluctuations were considered to be a source of non-reproducibility arising from stochastic processes. You can see here transverse oscillations, pulse wave, breathing pump, active and passive regulatory processes, frequency rifting, blood microcirculation systems. Uh, very important for, for analyzing uh, for medicine practice. The tissue reflectance uh, oximetry method uh, determines the relative blood volume, you can see here, of microcirculation and tissue oxygen saturation, you can see here, in the surface layers of the soft tissues. Is a, is a, it's over technologies. This slide shows examples of functional tests, tests used of record laser Doppler flowmetry signals to assess the adaptive capabilities of microcirculatory blood flow. Here are only two tests, very well known, easy and uh, fast, but very useful for uh, doctors. Uh, a breath holding test, you can see here, and occlusion test. We already said uh, before, uh, previously um, on the previously slides, but, uh, and here is breath holding test. I can uh, demonstrate you uh, right now this test. Uh, we uh, should uh, stop our breath and don't uh, breath uh, approximately 10, 15 seconds. Uh, you can see here uh, reaction. Uh, this uh, test allows to evaluate the functional overreflex activity of sympathetic fibers. Again, it's uh, very uh, important for uh, analyzing or for functional diagnostics, for example. Fluorescent spectroscopy method is based on excitation of the fluorescence of endogenous and exogenous by a tissue, fluorophores, and the recording emission, recording emission, you can see here in the visible region uh, of the spectrum. This method is highly sensitive and allows for non-invasive tissue oxygen metabolism uh, diagnosis. Here are the absorption and fluorescence spectra of the main tissue chromophores. Again, it's very important for oncology, cosmetology, transplantology, and so on areas in medicine. Currently, the optical diagnostics methods are widely used in various areas of science, including surgery, of course. These methods are often combined by the single term optical biopsy. Optical biopsy methods are much various. 
we proposed in our research our multi-parameter approach. For example, we use fluorescence spectroscopy uh, to assess the metabolic processes in the tissue, laser Doppler flowmetry to assess the blood flow, and diffuse reflectance spectroscopy to determine the chromophores content. A fiber optic system implementing both fluorescence spectroscopy and laser Doppler flowmetry methods was developed. Here we can see uh, our experimental setup for minimal invasive surgery. A distinctive feature of the system is a laparoscopic uh, optical probe, 30 centimeters in length and uh, 3 millimeters in diameter. The probe contains six optical fibers, you can see here. And, um, uh, a, spectro a, spectrum, a spectrometer was used, you can see here a spectrometer, was used to record the fluorescence spectra. The measurements um, were performed during uh, standard clinical um, diagnostics and therapeutic interventions under ultrasound and uh, X-ray examination. And in the end, the most part of students involved in biophotonics research at Oral State University studied or currently obtaining uh, their master's degree in biomedical systems and technologies. Our specialization, photonics and electronics in medical and biological practice, provides ones with uh, valuable skills, knowledge, and experience in research and development methodology and technical design methods, construction and operation of biomedical devices and systems, and the management of technological processes and productions. Welcome to our master degree educational program. Our dream team is uh, here, presented here, our collaborations uh, presented here. As uh, we can see, a uh, lot of organizations, uh, institutes, and uh, companies, uh, companies um, collabor collaboration uh, with us, educational research organization, not only from Russia, and uh, we collaboration with uh, UK, Finland, uh, and, uh, and, and other countries. I would like to thank all of our patients, of course, and volunteers for their contribution to our research projects. And I would like to thank the World Foundation for support of our projects. Thank you very much for your attention.